Hi, I'm Dr. Margot Daly, and today we're going to be doing a lameness exam with nerve blocks on Lizzie. First, we're going to have Carol jog her on the hard, flat ground to see where she's sore. Whoa! <laughs> So we've got some carbocaine here. This is a local anesthetic, which I'm gonna inject over under the skin, right over the areas where the nerves pass. This is gonna dull the sensation in the nerves in certain parts of her foot or leg and may help tell us what's hurting her and causing her to be lame. So first we're gonna do the Palmar digital nerve block. I can feel the nerve passing under my finger right here above the lateral cartilage of the foot. First, I'm going to place the needle into the skin. Then we will inject the carbocaine under the skin over the nerve. Usually one to two mils is enough. Okay. We're also going to block the medial nerve. This block should numb the heel area and the back of the hoof while leaving sensation intact along the front of the coronet band and the toe. When we were examining Lizzie today, we noticed this bump on the inside or the medial aspect of her cannon bone about halfway down. This bump is at a location where we can sometimes find an injury called a splint. This is a small injury and one that generally does not impact them long-term, although they can be uncomfortable when it first occurs. So what is a splint? The cannon bone is the main bone of the front leg in the horse. Behind it, on either side, sit two smaller bones, which are called the splint bones. They run from about here to about here. Between the cannon bone and the splint bone, there are ligaments connecting the two. When a horse pops a splint, it gets a small amount of inflammation in the ligament between the two bones, which can sometimes calcify. After letting the numbing liquid sit in her foot, we jog her again to see how she looks. She's still uncomfortable. To anesthetize the region where the splint injury is, we need to do something called a high four point block. We're gonna be blocking two nerves, one between the deep, deep digital flexor and the suspensory, and one just behind the splint bone. Letting the block sit for about 10 minutes, we test the skin over the front of the cannon bone. I'm not getting much reaction from Lizzie, so I'm hopeful that my block has anesthetized the area I want it to, which is essentially everything below this line. I'm having Carol lunge her to the right because this is the direction in which the lameness is most obvious. 